What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 43 and we start today's just off with a scouting update and an academy update as well as we look for a technically gifted type of player in this scouting report. So far none have made the academy until one did. Yes, right at the end of this scouting report here, Adam Roberts uh, makes our academy but frustratingly it's coming in a position which we don't really need. It's centre forward. And to be fair, I don't really know what to do with him. 61 rated, 74, 94 potential. I think he could have some decent potential. The range will, of course, decrease, but I think it will be pretty decent and plus 80 overall. As you see, our fixture for November, Luton Town, Birmingham away at St. Andrews, Blackburn Rovers where he would park as well. Some tough pictures coming this month. But yeah, for Roberts, obviously, look, no one's going to take the captain, Gavin Humphreys, out. Ravi Matondo is our CF slash ST as part of our front three. I, I mean, he could possibly get a game on the wing, but we'll need to get a little bit quicker. So it's always frustrating when you get a decent youth player, but it's coming to a position which you already have a decent amount of depth or first team quality in. Still 41st game of today's episode was indeed the Hatters. They were the first team we beat last season in our debut year in the Championship. That came away at Kenilworth Road. But heading into this game on the back of the 1-1 draw against Watford at Vicarage Road. Right now, as we know, we're neck and neck in the race for a playoff place, even though we're not at the halfway point of the season so far. We want to keep the undefeated run going, though. Nine straight games without a loss. Our best run of the season so far. And 20 minutes in, after Luton missed a golden chance, it's the man that's so good they named him twice who breaks the deadlock. Lloyd, Lloyd with the finish, smashes it in, makes it 1-0, and gives us the advantage there over Luton Town. And very briefly on this, I want to mention this real quickly. Um, some of you guys have been asking me about the uh, the shirts and the fact there are no names and no numbers on the shirts. And it's a common bug in this year's FIFA. Don't think you're doing anything wrong. Don't think there's anything you can do to fix it either. As far as I'm aware, it still affects new saves as well. And it is quite frustrating because the reason why I mentioned it is because 31 minutes in, we see another youth player with no name or number on the back of the shirt. And it's our kid, our captain, Gavin Humphreys. It is frustrating and it breaks away from the immersion and, of course, the realism as well. But I don't think there's anything you can do about it. I don't think there's a fix if it's already occurred. And I think it still affects new saves as well. I don't know why it's happened. I don't know what's caused it. But it's the sort of thing that I don't think he had been too quick to address. And again, for new saves, I don't know if it still affects them. I haven't started a new save yet. I'm still running with this one. And, of course, my Brentford and Milan career mode. But... Even so, um, for, for old saves or current saves, I should say, I don't think there'll ever be a fix. So it's the sort of thing you just, just kind of got, got to kind of persist with, really. But even so, 2 on win over Luton Town there. All the goals come in the first half. And there you go for Newport County. 10 straight games without a defeat. We're still knocking on the door in the playoffs right now. It's so tight between the top seven, top eight, top nine teams in the championship right now. I think it's going to remain this way all throughout the course of the season. Last year, of course, we finished in 10th. We did have a run sort of like in the second third of the season where we had a chance at maybe just maybe making a playoffs. In the end, fell short. This season, the board won automatic promotion, but I've already mentioned it for me. I'd be more than happy enough scraping into the playoffs. It's going to be another difficult season as far as I'm concerned. However, the longer we keep the run going, the more chance we've got of breaking into those playoffs and hopefully being able to stay there for a long period of time. Anyway, Blues, Birmingham City away, St Andrews uh, heading into this game. I've always found like you know there are some stadiums, some generic stadiums that are given to clubs where I always think, who, who thought that was the most realistic fit for that ground? Because I've been to St Andrews before. I don't know if you guys have been as well. But Ivy Lane, which is the generic stadium we're playing at here, looks nothing like St Andrews. I can already think of one right now, one generic stadium on FIFA that looks more like St Andrews than this ground here. I don't know whether they go based on capacity more than um, the actual aesthetic of the stadium. But... If anyone's been to St Andrews before, it, <laughs> that stadium looks nothing like St Andrews. But even so, we won the game by a goal to know Rabi Matondo coming up clutch late on. And speaking of Matondo, oh yes, absolutely buzzing. Finally, the position change has been completed from LW, or is it RW, to CF. Rabi is an official centre forward and now he's got the centre forward tag. 
I'm going to train in striker. Yeah, I should have done this last season. I mentioned it. I've got quite a few regrets in this save. This is the biggest one of the lot. I had a golden chance to train into striker at the start of last season when, of course, Davis and Bound went down and he became our out and out striker. As Newport County are in the playoffs, finally get in 17 games in. We've just about snuck in there. Our following game, Blackburn Rose away, and he would part, though, lose this game. We'll probably drop straight out of them. But yeah, for Matondo, I, I, I know I mention it all the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's just a massive regret because we could have trained into striker so early on into the season last year. Whilst it might have taken the whole year to complete, by now he would have been one. And his development, and if it's particularly the attribute increases in the striker role, would have been much, much quicker than they have been when I persisted just playing him out of position. Yeah, big regret that one, but even so. I guess the, the common phrase is better late than never, right? So yeah, now Matondo is official CF. He should hopefully become an official ST between now and the end of the season. Good form, of course, will determine whether that happens quick enough or not. Still, yeah, following game, Blackburn Rovers away, Ewood Park heading into this game right now. The Rovers right outside the playoffs in seventh place with us sneaking into it. I didn't want to be in the playoffs one game week and then drop straight out of it, which would happen if we lost the Blackburn Rovers. So heading into this game right from kickoff, being in attack mode, Gavin Humphries had two golden chances and he took it at the second attempt. Great ball through by Matondo both times and Humphries gives us the lead. And then 15 minutes in as Matondo storms down left-hand side here, rolls it through to Ruben Carl, a chance to make it two and oh, we'll take it, we'll take it. Probably should have been kept out, no doubt about it, but as we know this year, goalkeepers very inconsistent indeed. Probably should have been saved, but we don't mind one bit. Ruben Colwell gets another. I think it's only four or three or four goals to the season for Ruben Colwell this year. He's not been quite as good as he was back in that League 1 season. League 2, League 1 seasons where he was really good for us. But even so, still a key member of our side. Always on the team sheet. Always getting the chances. And he scores there as four for the year. So, 2 nil up on Blackburn Rovers. How they would half the deficit 34 minutes in. So, just like a game against Luton here. Leading by two. And then seeing the deficit halved so early on. On. So 2-1, and this was just like the Luton game, you know, scored those two early goals, then Blackburn getting back in the game, half and deficit right before the break, but again, all the chances coming in the first half, 2-1 the final score, we hold on for another big three points, three straight victories, and now 12 games without a defeat for Newport County, keeps us in the playoffs, and I haven't really mentioned it much, but still knocking on the door of the top two as well. Look, I know the board want automatic promotion. I, I'm i fine with playoffs, like I said earlier. That would do me fine. And I would have been fine at the start of the season with just another top 10 finish. But based on the start we've made to the campaign, and the fact we've been doing this as well, without Ben Davis and Dylan Levitt too, as Ben Davis returns from injury in this game here against Coventry City. But the fact we've been doing this without two of our higher rated players in the team and the highest rated player in the team, Ben Davis, is what makes the run even more impressive. We lost our leader, we, we lost our vet, we lost the highest rated player in the team, and yet that was the catalyst for going on this incredible long unbeaten run. 12 without defeat, and I keep on saying it, at some point it'll end, but the longer it goes on, the more I start to believe, and 51 minutes into this game here against the Sky Blues, this was a really nice little team goal here, really well worked, everyone getting a touch of the ball, and as Humphreys rolls through Matondo, the guy leading the way in the race for the assist title, getting the guy the goal that leads the way in the race for the golden boot, sees us break the deadlock on the lads from the Rico Arena, as Rabi Matondo gets goal number 17 for this season. Unbelievable. 1-0 to final score, big victory, and a big clean sheet as well. You know, I spent big on Joe Rodden in the summer window, putting on 40 grand a week, but it's safe to say he's worth that paycheck. Our defense has tightened up like crazy, and I think that's probably the most impressive thing about this season so far. As we enter our final game today, QPR taking us on to Rodney Parade. Right now, we've got the best home record in the division. Seven wins in 10, 22 points picked up at Rodney Parade this season. We've got the best home record in the league right now now but I owe it mostly to our defense whilst we won the top scorers in the league and Matondo's re leading the way in the race to Golden Boot right now last season it was well documented we had the second worst defensive record in the division for the season 
It was embarrassing. Despite finishing in 10th and had we not had that awful defense, we probably would have made the playoffs. But this season, it's really tightened up. And that's why as I'm talking about it, we concede. Three minutes after the restart in this game where QPR had been the better team. Charlie Kelman, fan favorite icon of my QPR career mode a couple of years ago, makes it 1-0 as the American gets the R's in front. But a few minutes later, a chance to respond. Ruben Cole steps in from the left. First shot block, gets it back. Rolls it back to Lloyd Lloyd. Great save by Jordan Archdale. Turns behind for a corner. And it's still 1-0. But from the corner, keeping the chance alive. Gavin floats it into the middle. Looking for Cooper. And the former Swansea centre-half wins the header and finds the back of the net. I don't score that many goals from course, but this season I've already got three, I think it is. So 1-1 back on level terms so early on after conceding Cooper with the goal. And then 64 minutes in, still tied at 1-1. Putting a high press on QPR here. Trying to win the ball back high up the pitch. Jordan Archer's pass is terrible. Humphreys wins it back. Oh, and that's the moment you've been waiting for. If you read the title, you're thinking, where is it? Where is that love goal? Well, there it is. We talked about goalkeepers this year. They are so inconsistent in FIFA. They make a lot of mistakes, and I've mentioned it before. I like it because it's more realistic, but particularly the distribution at times can be really poor. Kicks it straight at Gavin Humphreys. The first touch ain't the best, but the second? Oh, my goodness. Half volley, weaker left foot. This is absolutely... Glorious from Gavin. Goal of the season? Goal of the season. That was majestic from the kid. It might actually be my favourite goal of the series, you know. That was brilliant. I'm still yet to score a halfway line goal, for those wondering. I, I know sometimes you might ask me, you know, you're still trying it. I am trying it indeed, but the reason I'm not showing a highlight is because I'm not even getting close right now. I don't know why, but even so. That might not be from the halfway line, but it was still quite a long way out. Humphreys lobs Archer. That was beautiful. 2-1 the final score, and as our unbeaten run gets extended to 14, oh my goodness, Newport County... Our top of the table. Three games to go to halfway point. It's still incredibly tight. We're only just even in the top two and in the playoffs as well. There's not much separation, but for now, for the first time ever in the best run of the season, Newport County are top of the tree. But that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. Massive thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the channel, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of C&C very soon.